No? Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Cheryl at Cheveria with Talk Travel with Cheryl. And welcome to our monthly get together. Uh, today, I have two great ladies with me. I have uh, Tia from Visit Anchorage, Alaska. And I have Tracy from Alaska Railroad. So, Richard, two, two, yeah. So, today we're starting. I, I met these wonderful ladies at a Alaska uh, Tourism Board event uh, a couple of months ago. And I said to them, You get ladies are great. I really need to bring you on. So, we're going to get right down to the nitty gritty. If you ladies want to take over the morning meeting, that would be great. Uh, we're starting with Tia or Tracy. Yep. And Tia, well, Tia, I'm going to give you a little introduction here. She's a lifelong Alaskan and uh, knows her home like the back of her hand. Her love for the outdoors and adventure uh, allows her to explore the amazing, uh, amazing state of Alaska and uh, has worked for the Alaska Tourism Board for 25 years. Companies such as Gray Line Alaska, Holland America Line, Hotel Alaska, Ali? Alaska. Thank you. I'm very bad with that. Uh, Alaska's premier year round resort. She currently works for Visit Anchorage uh, as part of the tourism development and sales team. That is how I met this lovely lady for the last nine years. So, welcome, 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 both, both of you. I am so excited and wanting to talk to both of you since I met you. Um, so, Tia, why don't you start with your presentation? And if we have any questions along the way, I will ask them as well. And I am live on Facebook. So anybody who has a question, I am here to take your, your, uh, your questions and concerns. So let's get started. Awesome. Sounds good, Cheryl. Thank you so much. Um, Tracy and I like to refer to ourselves as uh, T and T because we're oh. dynamite. <laughs> so we're going to tell you a little bit about what's happening um, here in Anchorage and in Alaska and talk about all the seasons because we're open more than just the summertime. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick and we'll get started. So we're going to tell you a little bit about what's happening um, Okay, do you see my screen? Do I get a thumbs up from? Oh, yes, yeah, you certainly do. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that is a quick welcome from Tracy and I. That is at one of our conferences. We do work um, a lot together to, to educate uh, everyone about all the great things to see in South Central and Interior Alaska. So we do have a lot of fun together and love to present. So real quick, um, a little bit about myself. I know Cheryl just gave an intro, but I am a lifelong Alaskan who absolutely loves my hometown. So I, whether I'm exploring glaciers, chasing the Northern Lights, trying to fish for the next great one. That's a big king salmon right there. I love to get out on our trails, whether it's biking, hiking, snowshoeing, skiing, um, we have so many multi-use trail systems here in Anchorage. And then, of course, who doesn't like to eat and drink, right? Um, I love to eat our reindeer sausages. Uh, you'll find those hot dog carts all over uh, downtown Anchorage in the summertime. And even in the wintertime, we have a few that stick around and, and will sizzle up those sausages. And then I'm a big craft beer fan. So anytime I travel, I try to go try some new craft beers in and around our states, but Alaska right now in Anchorage, we have about, I think we just, we just hit 14 breweries, which is pretty decent for us. And we have a little secret ingredients in all our craft beers. Um, it comes, they use our tap water and our tap water comes from glaciers here in, in Anchorage. So a little special ingredients in all our, our beers. So enough about me. What is Visit Anchorage? Visit Anchorage is, is your friend here when you're in Anchorage. So we run the Visitor Information Center. So if you have any questions on where should you go for a nice dinner, or maybe you just need to buy a new pair of socks and where's the next store or get the shuttle systems because 
this visitor information center is right in downtown Anchorage. And so this is the hub for all shuttles. So this is where you're gonna find a shuttle for an Anchorage city tour, or maybe you're at a Midtown hotel and they're gonna drop you off in downtown. Also, you wanna go into this visitor information center because we have amazing volunteers here. Um, they are the ones that will talk to you about what their life here in Alaska is like. They're, has been like. They're bush pilots, they're teachers, they're dog mushers, they're uh, college students studying um, tourism. So a, a really great place to just meet local Alaskans here at our visitor information center. So stop by, it's right in downtown on 4th and F Street. Okay, when you talk about Alaska, it's best when you talk about the regions. So what Tracy and I are going to talk about, I'm focusing on South Central Alaska, which is the green area. And then Tracy is going to come and connect us from South Central to the interior, which is into Denali National Park and Fairbanks by the Alaska Railroad. So Southeast, South Central and interior are the most popular places to visit with, on an itinerary to Alaska because that Southeast is going to be that cruise area. So if you cruise across the Gulf of Alaska and into Whittier or Seward, our two cruise ports, then you can do a great land package that Cheryl can put together for you. And that will include um, South Central and Interior. If you do want to get to the Arctic and Southwest, you can also do that on an itinerary and then you can really see, say you've seen Alaska if you hit all of those. Can we stop you was, for a minute? Uh, how long now, I'm from the Orlando area, what kind of, uh, how long does it normally take to fly from Orlando to uh, Anchorage or what is yeah, the- Yeah, absolutely. Anchorage is the biggest um, city. So it's the most popular airport. The next one would be Fairbanks. So we have great connections going on right now. So usually it's two flights in the summertime to get here. So from Orlando, normally you go to Seattle. So Orlando, Seattle is about five and a half hours. And then from Seattle to Anchorage is three hours. So not bad. Plus there's a four hour time difference. So when you come into Anchorage, you're gonna be gaining four hours of your day. So don't be surprised if you land in the, in the uh, summertime and the sun's still up because the sun doesn't set until after midnight during our summer months. Ooh. Okay, and then I love to throw this in. Um, our official drink of Alaska is called a duck fart, which is kind of a funny little name. Just like the Mai Tai is to Hawaii or the margarita is to Mexico, the duck fart shot is to Alaskans. So you gotta try it at one of our, maybe our dive bars when you're here. What but is Anchorage, actually in that? That is, so that's what's in there. So on the bottom, it's layered like that. So there's Kahlua and then you put Irish cream and then whiskey, which we usually use crown. And it's actually a very delicious shot. That's kind of like a dessert shot, so. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Yeah, so if you ask for a duck fart in Alaska, everyone knows what those are, so. Okay. <laughs> it is, it's really good. <laughs> So then on to Anchorage. Anchorage, again, is the largest city that we have here in Alaska. So we about have about 300,000 people live in and around the Anchorage area. But if you think of the municipality of Anchorage, it stretches out from Eklutna all the way to um, Portage, which is basically the same size as the state of Delaware. So it's a, we're really spread out in Anchorage. But we're that urban city that has all the amenities of a big city, but we're surrounded by wilderness. I do like a fun fact here, Cheryl. I always say, you know, how big is Alaska? Because Alaska is big. Any guesses how many um, Floridas will fit into one Alaska? I didn't know this answer, so you told me it's seven. <laughs> oh, yes. Actually, I might have misled you. There's 11. I just looked at oh, that up. Oh, 11. So okay. 11. okay. Seven to 11. 11, 11 Floridas fit into one Alaska, which is pretty amazing. So That's huge. I know. So that's why we call ourselves the, the town. Um, our tagline is urban and wild. Like I mentioned, all those urban amenities that you want, the wilderness surrounding you to get out and play in Alaska, because that's what we're, we're known for. You want to get here and get on our trails, breathe in our fresh air and just take in that midnight sun in the summertime. So we are an award-winning trailside city. So we have over 200 miles um, of trail systems. So whether you want to climb to one of our many peaks or just take an evening stroll on one of our paved trails. But when you're out on those trails, you're of course looking for moose. We share uh, the Anchorage area with about 1,500 about 1, moose. So it's not uncommon to see them on our trail systems or even on our highway. So if you see a car pulled over like this, 
usually there's some type of wildlife being spotted. So if you have a, a client, if you guys are doing a self-drive, make sure if you see a car pulled over, there's something beautiful to be looking at. Also, Anchorage is known as the cultural soul of Alaska. We have the uh, largest native population that lives here in um, the Anchorage area. So a lot of them will come out of their the, the villages and work in Anchorage to be able to sell their well, wares. And then we also have the largest cultural center here called the Alaska Native Heritage Center. So you can meet the first Alaskans um, here, which is incredible stories that they have and how they still live the subsistence life up in that Arctic, that upper region I showed on that map. But we do um, respect and honor that we're grateful for the Denina land that Anchorage is on. So um, this is just a little way to honor the land that we are on because they found it before we did. We're also a culinary diversity. So we have anywhere, of course, from the wild fresh seafood. You have to try the Alaskan wild caught seafood here. It's a must. But we mm. also have, like I mentioned, those reindeer hot dogs is a, a local favorite. But we have Korean food, Japanese food, um, German food, just because we're kind of like a melting pot here in Anchorage. In fact, we have three of the most diverse high schools in the U.S., we have three high schools that speak over a hundred different languages. Wow. Granted, our Alaska natives, we have 11 different tribes here and they speak 22 different dialects. So that does give us a jump on it. But just to think about a um, hundred different languages in, in three of our high schools is pretty, pretty amazing. Like I said, a lot of people say, ah, I'm not a real big salmon fan, but until you catch that wild, fresh, fresh Alaska salmon, it is a must try try it just a little piece at least. But let's talk about that uh, temperature and daylight that we have. So um, briefly, we're going to talk about our winter one because we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. But our darkest day, everyone thinks, oh, Alaska is so cold and dark. But our darkest day is December 21st, which is winter solstice. We still get five and a half hours of daylight. On that map in that blue area up in the Arctic, they do have 65 days in the wintertime, right around November 18th they will not see the sun. So are there parts of Alaska that are cold and dark for about 65 days in the wintertime? Absolutely, but not Anchorage because of where we're situated. And we still have five and a half hours of daylight. But once we hit December 21st, we're gonna start gaining sunlight. So we get to June, June 21st is summer solstice. So now we're enjoying that 22 hours of daylight, which I like to call play light. And then once we hit June 21st, now, as you see, we're starting to hit August, we're starting to lose some daylight up until we get to December, but we still have about 18 hours of daylight right now. So we're not missing out on any of that play light right now. And then let's, let's look at our average temperatures in the summertime. Our average temperatures are in the sixties, but that can change by about 20 degrees. So a lot of people in the summertime are surprised when they come to Alaska and you need to pack a pair of shorts because when it's 80 degrees in Alaska and the sun's up for you know 20 to 22 hours, it gets pretty intense here. Um, and it's just lovely, but then also pack those layers because it could be down to uh, 60, 65, especially if you're coming from Florida, that might be a little chillier. Um, but then let's look at the winter time. Again, we're surrounded by water, surrounded by six mountain ranges. So we're more of a maritime climate. So we don't get that frigid cold that a lot of people think of Alaska. So yeah. our averages are in the twenties. So that is, that is not bad. <laughs> no, not at all. Right, Cheryl, it's not that bad. A lot of people, is not that bad. No, it's not. And, and uh, when I am talking to people to try to entice them going to Alaska, they're always saying, oh, it's too cold to go there. I, you know, I it's like, no, it's not. We're not going in the winter time. We're doing the spring and, and summer season. We're not going. I mean, I know there are Even people... if you want to come in the winter time, though, Cheryl, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. I'm going to talking... your... convince some of, your, some of your clients to come in the winter time. Hey, I'm from New magic. York. I know what cold is like. Yes, oh, there you I, go. <laughs> but I, I'm still saying to the people that are in Florida, it's like, I don't want to leave the heat. I was like, well, you, you know, it's, it's not what you think Alaska is like, you know, give it a chance. Uh, absolutely. Give it a chance. And Tracy and I will talk a little bit about our snow adventure season here in a little bit. 
So as you can see, we're very mild winter or weather, mild weather with extreme fun here. So again, you fly into the Ted Steven, Stevens International Airport. So um, we just talked about those flights. And then some of the ideas that you can do with Cheryl is she can plan like a base camp itinerary where you fly into Anchorage and use Anchorage, um, where you only unpack once, find a great hotel and you do all these amazing day adventures. Or maybe what's very popular is doing a self-drive. It's very easy to drive our road systems here. So you can see Anchorage on this map. We only have two highways out of Anchorage, one that heads south and one that heads north. So oh. super easy. If you want to rent a car, maybe an RV or a camper van, we have all those options available. Or you can do a custom built itinerary um, with our friends with the Alaska Railroad. And Tracy's going to tell us how um, those packages work that Cheryl can book for you. And in those itineraries, you definitely want to include some type of history and native culture. Like I mentioned, the first people of Alaska, our Alaska natives are truly amazing people to meet. Definitely wildlife. We share the land uh, with the animals here. And then a glacier experience. We have about 100,000 glaciers here in Alaska. We have about 60 that you can go visit within day trips from Anchorage. And a lot of the ways to get there is by the Alaska Railroad. And then some type of active adventure. And that active adventure looks different for everyone. And we can accommodate to for everyone as well. So there's always modifications that we can do. So getting outdoors on our lakes and rivers and our trails is very easy for everyone. And it looks different for everyone. And we can help with those. And this is just a map to show how much there is to see and do just in the South Central re region. So that's how the base camp itinerary will look. There's so much to see and do just in this region, but we're gonna travel up uh, to the interior with, with Tracy in a little bit. So real quick, let's cover our summer season, which is our most popular season, which is um, our peak season is gonna be June, July, August with our shoulder seasons being May and September. So if you're looking to save a little money, May and September are a great month to come. Um, but if you're wanting that full activity, full daylight, June, July, August is the time to come. This is what our city looks like here in the summertime. Beautiful mountain ranges. That's the Chugach Mountain Range, which is 700 miles of mountains to play in. So again, our urban and wild. So you can see that hot dog stand in the side there. Um, that is where you get that reindeer sausage and seeing those animals in the summer. We're also in full bloom. So I always say stop and smell the flowers. The flowers are absolutely gorgeous here in um, South Central in the summertime. They just are everywhere. So now adding that culture to your itinerary, we have the Anchorage Museum, which is right in downtown Anchorage. So you can learn the art, the science, and um, the history of Alaska. I always say, go to a museum first to kind of see where you're going, because there's just so many mysteries and so many fun facts about Alaska. So it's just kind of a, a great place to get yourself orientated before you go out and visit some of these great cities. And then the Alaska Native Heritage Center, which I mentioned is the largest cultural center that we have in Alaska. So this is where you can go and meet the first people of Alaska. You maybe want to get on stage and, and dance with them. All their dances tell stories, or you want to have tea with the elders, or they'll teach you how to fillet a salmon with a ulu knife. So really Ooh. cool cultural center. Yes, really cool. And then Cheryl, do you have anyone to ask about fishing in Alaska? Well, we have a lot of golfers that listen to me, but uh, my husband loves fishing. Oh, good. Oh, well, we do have golf courses too here, but uh, fishing is very popular here, again, for those five different salmons. But we have what's called Ship Creek here in downtown Anchorage. You can actually go and catch a salmon right here in this creek, right from walking down from downtown Anchorage. In fact, the railroad depot is right there as well. So you don't have to travel far to go catch that salmon here in Anchorage. And that is a beautiful silver salmon right there. So we get silver salmon, king salmon, and pinks every other year in this stream. And then we have the largest um, float plane airport in the world right here in Anchorage. It's right next to our airport. In the summertime, we'll have over 500 takeoff and landings in one day. Wow. It's like I mentioned, Cheryl, we only have those two highways that leave north and south. Alaska is really big. We have 11 Floridas and one Alaska. So how do you get around? float plane. Very popular way to get out to these glaciers and lakes and rivers and um, lodges or just to see Alaska by air is by float plane. It's also a great way to get to our national parks. So we have eight national parks here in Alaska. You can get to five of them from Anchorage. 
The first one is Kenai Fjords National Park, which is south of Anchorage, a great way to get there. You don't have to take a float plane. You can take the Alaska Railroad to get there. This is where you're gonna do that marine wildlife and glacier cruises and get into Kenai Fjords National Park. We have Wrangell St. Alliance over to the east. This is the largest national park that we have not only in Alaska, but in the US. So you will, it's a little bit tricky to drive there. You can do that, but um, going by plane will get you there faster and in this vast area of lots of outdoor adventure. And of course, Denali National Park, our most visited national park here, again, getting there by the Alaska Railroad. But we do get the question, can I go to Denali for the day? Well, by train, it's going to take just about eight hours. If you drive, about six. But if you did it by plane, it's a three-hour trip. So that is the only way you can do a real true day trip from Anchorage to Denali National Park. See the great one, the tallest peak in North America. And then we also have two bear viewing national parks that you can only get there by float plane, which is Lake Clark National Park and Katmai National Park. Um, amazing bear viewing. Depending on what month you're here is what national park you'll actually go. Katmai is very specific. It is the iconic catching the, the fish right from Brooks Falls. That is late June and July only. So if you want to see them in Katmai, that is the time to come. So those are the five. The other three we have, we have two up in the Arctic there, and then we have uh, Glacier Bay National Park over in Southeast. We do have guarantee wildlife viewing here in Anchorage, our beautiful Alaska Zoo, which is up on the hillside. So you can see those Arctic and subarctic animals that we have here in Alaska. But we also have the Wildlife Conservation Center, which is about, about an hour uh, south of Anchorage, but 200 acres. It's for injured and orphan animals. And it's just a really cool facility, whether you want to walk around or take their little shuttle around. It's about a mile and a half to go see all the animals of Alaska here. You can also do encounters with the animals at both our zoo and the Wildlife Conservation Center such as this one where you feed the deer or you can feed the moose or you can do something with the, the bears there as well or the porcupines. So depending on what animal you want to do that encounter with. We also have amazing events year round here in Anchorage. Um, Anchorage.net is our website and you can see every month we have some type of event happening here and tons of live music during the summertime. And right, let's see. Um, we also have markets and festivals happening almost every day during the summertime here too. Um, our market, this market here is every Saturday and Sunday and they have over 300 vendors. So just a really great place to do shopping and shopping by locals. What is getting ready to start here in August is our Alaska State Fair. So that kicks off the 22nd of this month and it goes all the way through Labor Day. So really, great Alaska event that we have in Palmer, Alaska, which is about 45 minutes um, north of Anchorage. So our Alaska fair. Also, when you're out on your trails in August, we're picking blueberries. In fact, another event happening is called the Blueberry Festival at Alaska Resort this weekend coming up. Um, so lots of blueberries, wild blueberries that people are picking to make into jams or jellies. We even make vodka with these blueberries. So lots to do or just eat them when you're out on the trails. They are definitely delicious. Yummy. Another popular thing to do here in um, Alaska in the summertime is get out to those glaciers I mentioned. This is out of Prince William Sound. Prince William Sound is one of the most glacier fed sounds in the world. You can do a cruise that you can see 26 different glaciers in five and a half hours. Such a great way to, to see these glaciers and get right up close to these tidewater glaciers. And in Prince William Sound, they can guarantee no sea sickness. It's very calm. So beautiful beautiful um, area and to get into Whittier, a great way to get there is by the Alaska Railroad. And then also another great glacier and wildlife day boat cruise is out of Seward, Alaska. Again, taking the Alaska Railroad and getting out into Kenai Fjords National Park. And again, getting to see the whales, the, and the glaciers and the puffins and the sea otters and sea lions, just breathtaking. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and let Tracy take over and tell you about the Alaska Railroad and their summer trip. So all aboard. Thank well, you, Tia. Well, Tracy, welcome. And before you. we get to you, I just want to remind my viewers who are on Facebook, I am taking questions. So if you have any for Tia, please let me know and I'll ask her. The other thing is I want to let my clients know who has special needs and mobility issues. I was sent a couple of itineraries for you plus 
these ladies can definitely customize for us or educate us later on if you have questions pertaining to your specific need, just reach out to me and I will reach out to them for you. So without further ado, I'm going to be introducing Ms. Tracy Zadra. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Zadra. And she is a proud 30-year Alaskan resident. She has a double degree graduate of the University of Alaska Fairbanks with honors in broadcasting and journalism, as well as speech communication, so she can teach me a whole lot. Uh, Tracy has experienced extensive careers in both the Alaska tourism industry, television, and radio. Uh, she currently works for the Alaska Railroad Corporation as a passenger sales executive. Again, that's how I got to meet this lovely lady. So I am going to let you have uh, control and, and we will listen to your wonderful presentation of the Alaska Railroad. All right. Well, thank you so much, Cheryl. And thank you to everyone here who has a, a, an interest in learning more about Alaska in my home state. I've lived here 30 years. And so I think I can speak on behalf of Tia too, that anytime we get an invitation to talk about our home state, we just jump at the chance. So uh, thank you very much, Cheryl, for inviting us into your travel world. So let's go ahead and share some slides here with you. Right, there we go. So this is a great map kind of highlighting there on the right side uh, in gray, our shape of our state of Alaska and where you see that gold bar, that is exactly where our track bed is located. So like Tia had mentioned, we are uh, connecting the south central portion of our state well up into the interior portion um, with our most northernmost terminus being the city of Fairbanks. So, all along the rail belt, those are our most populated cities and communities in our state. So the Alaska Railroad is not only just a, a transportation during the summer, it's a year round service. And we don't have uh, Amtrak here or bullet trains or subway systems. The Alaska Railroad is the main connecting link to the rest of our state. So that is a good map to kind of highlight exactly where we travel. And Tia had mentioned that the summer season is our most popular time of year. And it's true, everyone wants to come up to Alaska during the summer months. And because of summer's popularity, we have created four daily departing summer trains, taking you to incredible destinations like national parks and glaciers, um, some just incredible communities and highly sought after destinations. And Tia had mentioned that Anchorage is a great place to fly into. It is true. Um, all of our trains will arrive and depart from this beautiful city in, of Anchorage. And our depot and headquarters are located downtown on First Avenue. So it makes for a great place to fly into for those adventures north, south, east, or west. And it's a beautiful city to live and grow up in as well. So with the Alaska Railroad, we have two southbound daily departing summer trains. And the first one I'll introduce you to is our Coastal Classic train. And that departs Anchorage bright and early. We hug that beautiful coastline of Turnigan Arm. Um, we'll pop into the town of Girdwood for dropping off guests, picking up guests there. And Girdwood is a very beautiful community. It's home to Mount Alieska. It's a ski resort during the winter months. And then in the summertime, it's just a great retreat to take the gondola up to the top. You can see seven glaciers. It's beautiful. And then we kind of go off the beaten path into some rugged territory and arrive into one of two of our cruise ship port towns. This is Seward. Uh, Seward is a very busy, hustling, bustling uh, harbor. There's so much to do here from zip lining tours to the Alaska Sea Life Center. Uh, but the most popular tour to embark upon here in Seward is the Kenai Fjords National Park. It's a beautiful day cruise trip. You can see those whales breaching uh, the uh, the glaciers calving, and you can really feel the intensity of the cold. So if you have cl uh, clients or um, uh, you're not really sold on a cruise, going on these glacier day cruise, the smaller cruises are just so impressive and just getting you close to those massive 
uh, frozen rivers of ice. We also can accommodate with um, overnighting here in Seward. And then also we have a great cruise connection partnership. So we can deliver passengers to the cruise ships and we can also pick them up from the cruise ships. So we make for a great partnership here in the Port of Seward. Our second southbound train is our Glacier Discovery Train. And this is all about incredible adventure. Taking a look at that rail belt map here, we do depart Anchorage, we'll make a stop in Girdwood, but then we visit these other communities where we highlight some adventures where you get off the train, have some fun, and then the train will come back, pick you up and bring you to Anchorage. We of course visit the port of Whittier, it's our second cruise ship port, so we can deliver uh, guests to this cruise ship as well from Anchorage. Uh, the Prince William Sound is beautiful, uh, the waters are calm. There's actually vendors here that uh, can guarantee no seasickness because of the calm waters here for those glacier day cruises. And then of course, my favorite destination along this route is Spencer Glacier Whistle Stop. And it's unique only to those on board the train. So no other guests traveling to Alaska can experience this beautiful destination uh, like our guests can. You can get off here, you can do a self-guided walking tour around the lake up to the glacier if you wanted to. We also have some incredible uh, vendors that we work with here for uh, kayaking adventures, uh, float trips. So it's a really pristine, beautiful area to experience and unique only to the Alaska Railroad. Our third and fourth daily departing train is our flagship train, and this is our Denali Star train. Let's take a look at that rail belt map. You can see we're traveling between our two largest cities of Anchorage and Fairbanks. And unique to this route is that we have two sister trains that just bypass each other. So there's always a southbound Fairbanks and there's always a northbound Anchorage. So if you have guests arriving into Anchorage, we can go north and those arriving into Fairbanks, we can take you down on this train south. Um, beautiful stops along this uh, rail belt. Of course, the big highlight is Denali National Park, seeing the majestic uh, Mount Denali, North America's tallest peak is really incredible. I, I, I think I can speak on behalf of Tia that we have a ton of pictures of Mount Denali because it really is a magical mountain to um, see. So uh, I definitely recommend um, this interior route. Uh, Talkeetna is a great place to visit as well. It's only 60 miles from the base of um, the whole Alaska range and it offers some incredible flight scene adventures. Uh, so we can definitely connect you to that interior experience. And we do have some summer packages that you can look at um, with your client Cheryl online at alaskarailroad.com. Or the beauty of the Alaska Railroad is we can actually start packages from scratch. So if you have guests that are arriving uh, cruise ship first or Anchorage, we can put packages together for them. Uh, so it's a, a great opportunity to have an incredible um, land uh, package experience uh, through the Alaska Railroad, and we can help you do that. Uh, so all of our packages will include, of course, the rail travel. We've got incredible hotel accommodations to choose from, whether you choose five-star, three-star, remote wilderness lodges, our trains can get you there. And in those packages, we also have day trips, uh, like whale watching, um, horseback riding, golf, you name it, uh, we have adventure in Alaska. So we want to make it as seamless as possible for you, Cheryl, uh, because we know Alaska is big, there's lots to do. So we kind of help you, uh, we're your travel trade friends that kind of help uh, in putting those packages together. So I'd like to show you a quick video of who we are, where we go, and where we travel. All aboard. Sorry about that. Is it not supposed to be any background noise? There's no audio coming through. 
Hey, Tracy, maybe we'll just send the link and they can, uh, Cheryl can attach it to watch the video. Oh, you, can, you can't you can hear it? No. There's no sound. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I yeah, can well, hear it fine. <laughs> okay. I, I can just kind of let it go here if you want. Um, I One thing I did want to mention is that we have two different types of rail cars aboard our trains, which is great uh, depending on your client's budgets and what they'd like to see and experience. Um, we've got the Gold Star cars here, all inclusive. All the meals are included. Um, there's also a second viewing platform. Includes all the meals as well. Now question with the train. Um, are you traveling during the day and staying at hotels at night so you're not missing anything or are you going through the train uh, the whole time? Uh, you are on the train, but it's it's a destination driven train. So we're gonna take you to an incredible place. Most people will get off, stay the night, do a tour and catch the train the next day. So it's, it's whatever your clients are interested in. We do not have sleeper cars. Uh, we're all about checking out the sites, keeping your eyes open for wildlife and then just the beautiful topography and scenery that we do travel through. And I forgot to mention that we are an accessible train. So with our Gold Star cars, the double-decker dome cars, we have a spiral staircase leading to the seats on the upper level, or we also have elevator lifts. So we have six Gold Stars uh, cars in Alaska, and each of them have their own elevator lift bringing you to the top and then also to the dining car down below. Our adventure class cars are very roomy as well. Um, anyone with mobility issues, uh, wheelchair accessibility that they need. Um, we have an amazing staff at all of our depot connections um, that we can just be there for uh, your passengers and making sure that they get on and off uh, in, a, in a comfortable manner. And then with um, the accessibility, if you let our reservationists know that you need a wheelchair in Denali or you need to have some extra um, assistance at any of our stops, We've got a great team and we connect down the line with our, uh, our accommodations as well, making sure you have accessible rooms, motor coaches that have chairlifts as well. So we've got a great team to connect you to Alaska. I have a question. Being, uh, now I'm not totally blind, but I'm visually impaired. The, the tour guides on the train, is it fully narrated that whatever we're looking at is, is somebody explaining what's going on? or is yeah. there it is a great question thank you cheryl it's all narrated and guided and once you're on board you're introduced to the locals these are uh high schoolers that have grown up in Alaska and they share in the wonders of our state, no matter the season, they're highlighting landmarks along the way. Our engineers are actually working for you as well. They're trying to figure out if they're seeing any wildlife, um, anything of interest, and they'll pass it back to our team on board and they'll say, hey, there's a grizzly bear and some cubs on the right hand side, get your cameras ready. So it's a great Alaskan uh, passionate team on board that's gonna be guided, and uh, everything is gonna be narrated. So it's, it's really an enjoyable experience in that respect. Well, I do have a question in reference to the food. Is it customizable? Cause I have one client asking that she's not a seafood eater, but she, uh, she has some dietary issues. Would that be a, an issue on the train? Uh, if you go to our website, alaskarailroad.com we actually have a full menu and we have a variety of foods to choose from. So you can check out our menus on our trains and the, we also have a, a, a dining car, a bistro, if you will, for grab and go foods. And it's anywhere from sandwiches to breakfast burritos. Um, so you can check out our menu online. And if there's something there that, that doesn't look um, like it's going to um, accommodate your, your uh, dietary needs, then you can maybe just bring your own food on or um, it, that is, that is what we offer on board. So um, hopefully there's something for everyone from vegetarian to meat dishes. Um, it's a really good mix. All right, thank you. Well, well, I still have the two ladies here and I would like to ask my Facebook watchers, I know we have a number of them, and that was one of the questions. Does anybody have any questions for Tia and Tracy? If not, 
at this time, you know, you can always email me, but let's see who's out there that does have a question. Anybody? Give it a minute or two. If not, then uh, mm, yeah. hi, Arlene. Uh, do you have any questions for our guests, Tracy and Tia, for Anchorage, Alaska, and the Alaska Railroad? Just making sure she just came on. As you know, that this will be recorded and, and posted on our YouTube channel. And it'll be made available on Facebook and all, all social media. Uh, ladies, I, I know we were mentioning the different activities in Anchorage, especially Anchorage. And I was very interested when I was hearing that, what is there, 22 hours worth of sunlight in Anchorage? What was that, yes. June, July? June and uh, July, yeah. And we're still in August, so about 18, so... So for lots our, of play lights. So. A lot of play time, especially for our golfers. If you want to ever say that you golfed at 10 o'clock at night in full sunlight, that's something to put on your bucket list. And they do have some really gorgeous golf courses there, some great fishing. Uh, if you're interested in uh, uh, snowshoeing, if you have any kind of activity, Anchorage or any part of Alaska, it's really great to find out more about. So ladies, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, you'll have a link to this show and we will be in touch with each other, of course, over the years, over the months, because I'm really getting my clients into visiting the great state of Alaska, especially Anchorage and the Alaska Railroad. So thank you again for joining me today. And do uh, you have any questions for me that, that we're here this morning? Uh, ladies no, or no. anybody on Facebook that I can not No? Well, thank and you. Cheryl, maybe we'll do a second one. We'll do a follow-up where we talk about just the snow adventure season with you and your clients. I would so love now that they might have it. some question about yeah. the summer <laughs> and that beautiful, you know, all the things to see and do. But let's let's talk about winter next time. I definitely will. And I will maybe we'll make an evening event and have more people on Facebook and on Zoom too. So have a great day and thank you, ladies. All right, Cheryl, thank you so much. That, I'll just add um, thank you very much for the invitation to present. Um, I, I did forget to mention that the Alaska Railroad is turning 100 Yay! years old. And choo -choo! <laughs> we are very excited about this. So it's um, an extra special celebration next summer, um, or no matter the time of year for your clients to come up to Alaska. We will definitely welcome them into our beautiful state. And they're just there's just so much adventures to be had here. And it's it's hard to pinpoint exactly what to do the first time you come up. But uh, we're your friends now in Alaska, and we're here for you, and we welcome you as well, and anytime. And I will be looking for those flyers and promotionals for the 100th birthday. So definitely I will get them out for you. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for everyone's uh, interest in learning more about our home. Right, Tia? We love that's right. Come see. <laughs> Come see TNT, right? TNT. TNT. Thank you. 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 Thank you